Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the calculation of time period for the emitter coupled stable multivibrator. So in the previous video I have explained about you the calculation of different voltages at different time, different uh, points of this circuit emitter coupled stable multivibrator uh, like VE1, VE2, um, VBN, VBN1, VBN2 vcn1 and vcn2 we have taken this as the ground as the n so r is nothing but n here okay so then the interval now we need to calculate what is the amount of time period for the capacitor to charge or discharge so the interval t1 when q2 comes into conduction and q1 goes into off so we are assuming that q1 is in off state and q2 is in on state so this particular instant will end at t2 till now we have talked about the instant t1 so up to t1 up to time t1 q1 is in off state q2 is in on state so this particular state may be changed at t is equal to t2 so this state may vary or alter at t is equal to t2 onwards okay the, so the transistor q1 will turn on and q2 turn off okay so in that case ven1 of t2 minus what do you mean by t2 minus t2 minus is the instant where before the change of states of q1 and q2 which is nothing but vbb minus v gamma so since the base voltage of q1 is fixed then to carry the transistor from the cutoff point to saturation the emitter must be must have some drop no okay so but this drop is very very small that what is the amount of small that is only v gamma that is only v gamma it will be around 0.2 volts so because the emitters are capacitively coupled why we are why because we have used a capacitor in between emitter 1 and emitter 2 okay capacitively coupled there will be an identical jump identical jump in ve2 by an amount of very short duration like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 volts so therefore the cycle of events described here that behaves as an stable multivibrator okay so what is the ven1 here ven1 is nothing but ven1 is equal to so we can write it as v final minus v final minus v initial into e power minus t by tau so that is equal to what is the v final value zero capacitor can charge up to zero we are talking about the capacitor which is which is in between the emitters emitter one and emitter two zero minus initial value is v1 minus t by tau v1 into that is equal to v1 into e power minus t by tau so now at t is equal to t1 yet t is equal to t1 v na v emitter to ground 1 is equal to v b b minus v gamma so v b b minus v gamma you can equate it to v b b minus v gamma is equal to v1 into e power minus t1 by tau here okay so from this calculate t1 because our aim is to calculate the period so e power t1 by tau is equal to v1 divided vbb minus v gamma so t1 is equal to tau into ln of v1 by vbb minus v gamma this is t1 or else we can also write tau is nothing but 
RE1 into C. The capacitor charging and discharging is done through this. Either in this direction or in this direction. So one time it will be multiplied like this RC. RC is a this product. And another time this is this product. Okay. So RE1C logarithm of E1 by VBB minus V gamma. This is the time period T1. Similarly, we can calculate T2 as well. So, assuming that the supply voltages are large compared with the junction voltages and assume IB2 or E1 is very very less compared to VCC1. Assume IB2 R E1 is very very less compared to VCC1. We can find T1 as T1 is equal to capital T1 time period T1 is equal to R E1 into C ln of VCC by VBB. Okay, so V1 is nothing but VCC. This is, <coughs> this is for, see, if you take this as the waveform, this is T on and T off. It is T1 and it is, it is T2. Okay, so there, and similarly, we can calculate, similarly, we can write, no need to do the same calculation again, because it will be like RE2 into C ln of VCC by VBB. Here VCC, there are two different VCCs. So take VCC 1. Okay. So the capacitor uh, collector resistors RC1 and RC2. RC1 and RC2 both are same. So we are assuming it as RC. So if VCC 1 and VBB are arranged to be proportional to one another here, then what happens then the frequency is independent of the supply voltages here note if vcc1 and vbb are arranged to be proportional to one another then the frequency is independent of supply voltages the frequency is independent of supply voltages but when q1 is of its collector to ground voltage is approximately VCC1 here. So when Q1 is in off state from collector to ground voltage is approximately equal to VCC1 and equals to the base of ground of VC second transistor Q2. Since it is designed that the Q2 be in its active region, then V base 2, see here base 2 ground should be less than the VCC1 and as well as VCC2 will be less than this particular supply voltage. Voltage appeared from base to emitter is base to ground is always less than the collector voltage, collector supply. So since Q1 is to be driven into saturation, then its base voltage must may be almost as large as the collector supply voltage. So we be, one thing is, one thing we have assumed that VCC1 is less than VCC2 and similarly VBB the base bias supply is less than VCC1 a circuit which uses a supply a single supply voltage 
and which satisfies the requirements that the VBB is proportional to VCC1 and that VBB is less than VCC1 is less than we can write from these two relations we can write it as VBB is less than VCC1 less than VCC2 since the capacitor C is a bypass capacitor independent to maintain VBB as a constant value so RC1 collector resistance RC1 is equal to it's a parallel combination of two resistors R1 R dash divided by R dash plus R double dash so VCC1 is equal to VCC into R double dash plus divided by R dash plus R double dash plus VBB into R dash by R dash plus R double dash. So that this is about the calculation of supply voltage VCC1 and time period. The advantages and disadvantages of this intercoupled stable multivibrator or the collector coupled stable multivibrator are given here. So uh, advantages are I will write few advantages here. Advantages are it is inherently self starting. It is inherently self starting. Inherent it is inherently self starting. The collector of Q2 where the output is taken from load heav heavily even cap uh, capacitively. The output is free of recovery transients. The output is free of recovery and transients. Transients are nothing but changing the state, the stable state and transient state. So because it is having an isolated input at the base of Q1, synchronization is convenient. So frequency adjustment is convenient because it may be one capacitor is used. Frequency tuning is possible as there is only one capacitor. So similarly disadvantages are also there here. So disadvantages are the circuit is more difficult to adjust for proper operating conditions. So more difficult to adjust more difficult to adjust for proper operating for proper operating conditions the circuit cannot be opened or operated with t1 and t2 widely different so the circuit uses more components than does the collector coupled circuit so this emitter coupled uses more components than the collector coupled collector coupled circuit okay so in this way we can explain about the different advantages and disadvantages of this stable uh, by stable uh, multi vibrator as an stable multi vibrator in the emitter coupled configuration thank you